Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to Train World's uh, Facebook Live page. And we have a very special guest for you guys, um, the one, the only J YouTuber, James Wright, JLWII2000. How are you doing, James? Good, Ken. How are you doing? <laughs> All right. Not too bad. And it's actually, this is pretty amazing because you're actually in Milwaukee right now. And we're going to be doing a live YouTube uh, Facebook event with James Wright in Milwaukee Train Fest. Yep, where's the entrance right there? People are starting to funnel in as they just opened the doors. And this is uh, day two of Train Fest in Milwaukee. A really high attendance, if not record attendance yesterday. So there's a lot, of, a lot to see. And from what I understand, I'll be showing you guys around. Yeah, James is like our limousine concierge. She's going to give you the backstage pass to Train Fest. And uh, I'm over here in New York. He's in Milwaukee. Uh, this episode is going to be great. And everybody knows James, so he may get pulled by uh, a bunch of people saying, hey, James, hey, James. But um, we'll, we'll try to get through this because James is a uh, uh, YouTube star, as we say, in the train industry. But um, yeah, it's pretty light today, so hopefully there won't be anything crazy. But right in front of me, we've got uh, Woodland Scenics. Okay. So I just want to switch the camera around and show you guys a lot from Woodland Scenics here. So you're probably familiar with their Just Plug lighting system. I uh, did a video on that a while back, but it's really easy to set up. And they've got buildings and light accessories. They've got their new flag and flagpole. So you can uh, add that to the Just Plug lighting system. But the Just Plug lighting system is just an easy way to tie in all of your lighted buildings on the layout and light them up and have a central location to control them from. So there's the expansion hub and light hubs. So you would mount this on your layout plug it in and you've got a, a central power button as well and it just allows for easy setup of the of all your lighting on your layout and then around the corner they've got their new scene here at the train show showing off their water effects and wow. of course turf and field grass along with uh, tufts finely foliage and they've got their premium trees, so the top of the line trees that they sell. And a little further down, you can see they've got track bed that rolls out, and you can ballast your layout, put your track on there, and go to town. On the roads, they have a road striping pin, so you can do road striping very easily. And uh, it's just really nice, all the ready-made stuff that makes layout building a lot easier from Woodland Scenics. Yeah, Woodland Scenics is a great company. By far, we sell the most Woodland Scenics out of any scenery company. Um, the detail and the, uh, the, the, the level of uh, modeling is just great from Woodland Scenics. They have some really nice stuff. And you know, these guys, MTH, they're not too far from your neck of the woods. Yeah, they, they're they close by. Look, yeah. look at that old gauge uh, train, the uh, Kansas City Southern, I believe. Um, yeah, that's the, the Kansas, Army City, Kansas City Southern SD78. And then they've got all these matching cars now. So you've got POW MIA. And then each branch of the military here on Veterans Day weekend is represented with these cars. Can, and then the uh, caboose is similar to the locomotive. Can, can you then. tell uh, Rich Foster that the TCA is looking for him? Hey, Rich Foster, uh, Ken Bianco said the TCA is looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, one thing that me and Andy talked about that I, I was completely in the dark on was this GS4 and the fact that MTH had garden scale or G scale 
um, locomotives and rolling stock, but they really do. This thing's amazing. I tried to steal it twice from the show and he wouldn't let me, <laughs> uh, but it comes with lighted passenger cars. So they've been in G scale a while and I've been sleeping on that. So I wasn't really aware of the G scale nice. stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's beautiful. And then an HO scale, which is obviously where, where I live, <laughs> they've got the KCS locomotive and SD70 ACE, and they've got dem uh, painted demonstrations of the uh, Powered by the People, yep. or pre-production models, I should say, and the Spirit of 1943, or Spirit of EP 1943, George Very Bush nice. 4141. And this is the first time I'm seeing it. I don't know if it's been at other shows, but the UP regular SD70 ACE, but with the upgraded PTC antenna. Okay. So that turned out really well. PTC antenna is very streamlined, and uh, the MTH SD70 ACEs are good pullers. So those are some of the things that stuck out at me for MTH. You got any other questions there? They've got their Christmas sets over here too in O scale sets and individual locomotives all decorated up with leds so that's just really eye-catching yeah they got a lot of nice stuff yep and, the, and then the, uh i think i'm gonna make somebody else talk for a minute so <laughs> i might bring in chris palomares from Athen. all right so big chris yellow Paris, <laughs> they got their new shirts on with uh representing all the different safety slogans on the up caboose a beast cool. and uh i don't know if, if he wants to take a second to show you around his award-winning uh, award yeah yeah so they won this they won my youtube award this year for best rolling stock people's choice award yeah and james and, uh, if if uh if chris is going to speak yeah, if you could just yeah, point the microphone to him and this is kind of the focus for Yep, here we go. All right. Talking about little bark. <laughs> so we have right here is the C, D, and Q. And uh, this one is uh, kind of the focus for Train Fest. And this is uh, the distinguishing window arrangement. This is railroad specific detail on here. Very nice. And uh, the theme railroad for Train Fest has been the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy. So we were. We felt that this would be a good place to launch this caboose here and uh, bring out the rest of the family too. So, and, and that's an important thing. This is a family of caboose's. This is more than just three road names. All and right, Chris, so that's uh, can Chris you Palomares. Ask, can you mm -hmm. ask Chris if they're new molds? Are there new molds? Are they new molds? Or? Absolutely, all yeah. were brand new molds. Nick Bolo actually helped us out with this. Brand new molds. Brand new molds. Uh, Nick Molo helped us out with a lot of the research on these models. Uh, so we're, we're really confident that this is going to hit the nail on the head for a lot of, uh, you know, rivet counter type model railroaders. Awesome. All right. And then uh, the other things at Atherin, they've got their SD90 Mac, which I helped them announce. Uh, so they've got on display here. In all three variations that they're offering on the first run, the Mac Canadian, attack. Canadian Pacific, yep, and then the uh, got the EMD 90, which is that's just the demonstration when the Electromotive or EMD was trying to sell those to the railroads, right? And UP, uh, and these are Red Sill era. They may do some other stuff later, but uh, this is the Red Sill era of UP. And then just recently, I just showed a sneak peek on this was the Go Rail. Oh, yeah. Uh, SD60E for Norfolk Southern. And then they've done some really cool stuff with their Tier 3 GVOs, like this BNSF that has uh, the door panels replaced, where some of them have the old BNSF logo, some of them have a new, and then some of them are faded out. Very nice. So really good for modelers that want to weather and they've got a, something to base on so they can just build on that base. And, uh, it's called prime to grime. And can you show the uh, powered of the people engine, James? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's the main center one here. I didn't even show you that. It's some cool graphics. Very nice. Yeah, all the, going along the side, there's just a, 
a lot of Art Deco type graphics. And then you've got this nice stripe on the top. Hmm. With the PTC antenna array. Cool. And then the same on the other side, but different graphics still. So Beautiful. pretty nice job. No Mather. Very nice. Make sure you tell uh, Chris we thank him very much. Train World said thank you. <laughs> and then right next to Atherin is Bachman, and Bachman has a lot of great stuff. Specifically, I should say, uh, for this year, you know, they've had a lot of that new Amtrak, yeah. ACS 64, and they've re released their Amtrak uh, cars here. So those are running around the layout. They're lit uh, with LED lighting on the cars and pretty flicker free. I think they have a maybe a small capacitor in them. Got an N-scale GG1 going around here with some passenger cars from Pennsylvania Railroad. Yeah. The ON30 they they like to show off too. So really cool there. And this is the R. Lee Wiley Riley car. Very um, nice. So he was obviously a big Bachman staple and uh, you know, uh, will be missed. They've got new samples of their new uh, locomotive here. So I forget the nomenclature on that. It's the uh, Northeast uh, electric locomotives that run on uh, Amtrak. Yeah. Siemens Charger. Really Siemens nice. Charger. Yep. 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 I think SC44, if I'm not mistaken. But, yeah, SC44. Um, but Bachman was actually telling me, James, that you see that um, the X X sketch on that charger. There's going to yeah. be a blue light that actually lights up, um, which be will be a really cool feature on that. Oh yeah, yeah, and they've got they've put uh, a variant of TCS Wow Sound in it. I think it's not named TCS Wow Sound, but that's going to be in that SC44. And then they've got a lot of current stuff, current products that are out. I'm going to live stream the train world. Um, so the uh, S Southern Pacific GS4 and uh, 611. And then uh, we've got the ACS 64s up here. I'm trying to get a little closer. Yeah. And so the salute all... to veterans uh, for Veterans Day is coming up. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty neat. But these are all current offerings, I think a lot of which are in stock with you guys. Yeah. So is there anything else you guys would like to talk about at the show? Um, if you could ask Larry if the uh, they have a demo of the Thomas N scale train or narrow uh, gauge. Ken wanted to know about the Thomas N scale narrow, or narrow, narrow gauge. gauge. Yes, it's, st it's still on, uh, it's still in process on the end, on the end gauge. Uh, it's looking like just after the first of the year. Okay. So any any pre-production model? Doug is personally involved with. So. Okay. Is there pre-productions or no? Uh, right we have we have to. We don't have pre-productions. We don't have them here. But okay. We don't have somebody to have some uh, molding samples. Okay. okay no so problem. you're probably looking uh, realistically February, March, April, something like that. Okay. I guess. Okay. He said uh, March, April. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. We got uh, Ken, Ken Patterson wants good to morning, say hello. Ken. Hey, good morning. How you doing? Said, how you doing? It's awesome. Man. It is good. <laughs> it's good to go. So yeah, that's uh, that's the Bachman booth. Very large. You got a lot of in scale offerings too for your in scale folks. Yeah, not so nice stuff. Ton of product and a lot of uh, you know one thing I like about Bachman is. Unless it's super hot, like those ACS sixty ACS sixty four sold out, right? You, know, you can take a day or two to get it, but I still suggest pre ordering stuff, right? Um, but they 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 order a nice quantity. I think what's what's uh the trend these days is not ordering quantities so much anymore, and and sometimes things sell out really fast. So yeah, I still suggest pre orders, but. I think it's a really good thing that uh, they, they keep a beefy stock and then you guys keep a beefy stock in your warehouse. Yeah. I'm going to take you down to Rapido. Okay, um, cool. 
So that's just a little bit of a walk, but in between there's a lot of really cool vendors that do signs. Nice. And specialty items. You've got vendors that do uh, switches and then lubricants for track, track cleaners and lubricants and uh, all sorts of stuff. So, Yeah, this is a great show if you're in the Milwaukee area. A uh, lot of manufacturers, a lot of vendors. It's a great time. So if you're in the area, definitely try to stop by. I come as an agent of Train World. <laughs> yeah. look, look at the logo. No. <laughs> no, we're, we're here to talk about uh, Rapido stuff. So what's you got the SW1500, is that right, Dan? No, 1200. 1200. Oh, man, 1200. See, there's just too much stuff to keep track of, but there... This is showing, and I'll have to switch around to this side. Yeah. Crowd, crowds are starting to amass here. But this is showing uh, the first pre-production kind of shells and samples of the SW1200. Very nice. And they've got all sorts of different variations. You can see the spark arresters are one of the main differences, spot, spotting differences up at the top. You've got all these different spot, spark arrestor configurations. So... And then they've got their coaches. Yeah. Huh? The the HO ski train, Rio Grande. Yeah, the yeah, the HO ski train. They're releasing not only that, but Amtrak uh, Horizon coaches. Yeah. Uh, they're doing it via uh, Canada coaches. And uh, they're doing the clubs and the coaches and the business class cars. They also so, just announced those PAs uh, this week, which will be uh, uploading in yeah. our system. Um, but a uh, lot of new announcements from Rapido recently. Yeah, PAs don't have a uh, pre-production sample, but they got a nice graphic here showing all the different road names. Um, I was asking them where uh, Doyle McCormick's is, but they said they might get to that eventually. Um, <laughs> but they're doing, they are doing a nickel plate road uh, down here that's number 181 i was just saying come on give me 190 because i'm a, a modeler that likes all the the museum stuff right uh i don't know if you guys still have royal hudson's in stock but that was a big hit for them as well yeah and beautiful got a bunch stuff of, yeah and they've got a bunch of in scale stuff on display too mostly passenger cars and the f40ph so yeah, soundtracks here too. I know you guys are a soundtracks yeah. dealer. They've got a new 21 pin mobile decoder. They've got, nice. uh, hi, George. A, Ken says hi. <laughs> and they've got uh, some display of their products here as well. So, very nice. Standalone decoders, they've got a lot of options. It's going to walk you down to uh, Pico. Did I say it right this time? Yeah. Yeah, Pico. <laughs> yeah, they uh, do a lot of G scale products. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, you get a thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. I talked to hey, how's it going? I talked to him yesterday. But Pico has some really cool areas for the kids to play. Uh, they've got some of their sets out here, and then some Legos in between, or building blocks in between to play with. Uh, and Hopefully. that's that's great to see, you know, the families, the kids interacting. That's what train shows is all about. Yep. And then uh, for the serious modelers, yeah, yeah, for the serious modelers, they're on the other side. Um, you've got a nice display of their G-scale stuff, steaming locomotives, and even HO scale. They got this bullet train in the center here. Very nice. Which uh, sells as a set. And now they've got their own uh, Pico controller, huh. which is a variation of the uh, ESU controller. Right. So, yeah. For develop, yeah, mutual engineering or something. Yeah. So lots of cool stuff. Uh, and it's really nice to see them give an area for the kids to play along. So, is that uh, Dan? Yeah, it's Dan. Huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hey, how we doing, Dan? J Jonathan, how you doing? Jonathan, okay. what? Just fighting with AT and T on my cell plan. <laughs> I won't turn on my hotspot for some reason. Uh, <laughs> J Jonathan wanted me to check up and make sure you're working today. Jonathan doesn't even know what a hotspot is. 
<laughs> What's the remote do? Uh, this is the RC remote. Okay. Um, He's going to talk about the RC remote for a sec. The RC remote is a simple key fob remote. Uh, it can control track power trains. That's the 35028 system we came out with about a month ago. Sure. And um, the battery powered 25 tonners also use this system to control the logo. Uh, up is basically forward or faster, down is slower or in reverse. Uh, out of the box, usually button one is uh, a light function with three, uh, 35028. Number two is in uh, auto power off, basically, that takes about a second. Um, and then there's a loco receiver for uh, working on older locos as well if you want to make them work with the RC system. All right. Well, thanks. Uh... Thanks for the time, Pico. We're going to move on. I'm going to show you uh, Lionel. And then we'll talk to Broadway Limited. And we'll try to go check out Walther's as well. All right. So all the major manufacturers do show up to Train Fest because it's a big deal. Lionel is uh, pretty busy. But we got their HO scale items that come back. And they're starting to get into HO scale more. Yeah. So what yeah, they yeah. have is a few different sets. You got the Christmas Express HO set and Santa Fe Cone Flyer HO set. And the New York Central set as well. These are all kind of the same mold, but they got different schemes. And it's a nice HO system that can be ran on DC, DCC, or you can use their Lionel remote that's included in the package. So it gives you a lot of options for running. Uh, I think it's very kid friendly with that remote, which you can see right here because it's basically got bell, whistle, and some passenger or freight announcements, forward, reverse, and on and off. So it makes huh. it really simple for the kids to be able to utilize that. Very and nice. You guys know more about this than I do, but we're going to step into the O-gauge world or, or the O-scale world, and they've got a lot of sets. Merry Christmas set up top here. And they've got the blue comment in a yep. uh, really – Easy to afford set that MSRPs for three hundred and seventy dollars. Sure. Lion Chief, it's got that remote we talked about. And it's got all of these uh, lit passenger cars with silhouettes. So three three cars and a locomotive with a tender for three sixty nine. And then they've got different variations of the same type of set, like the Christmas sets. Yeah, this is Winter, the Winter Wonderland, Wonderland, but it's uh, doesn't have the it's not as expensive as the Blue Comet. It's two ninety nine dollars MSRP for a whole set. It includes that remote. Then down below, they've got the BNSF Tier 4 Lion Chief set with an MSRP of $399. So that's Lion Chief, which is um, makes it affordable for everybody, but they've got serious, you know, um, those really quality locomotives in the O gauge or as well, including the Union Pacific Vision Line Challenger. And they've got the auxiliary tenders for UP and Pennsylvania J1A. They've got a weathered example of that here. So, yeah, this is very nice. Serious, uh, detail oriented O gauge modeler. So, they really cover all the, all the different modelers and all the different levels. And, from what I hear, they'll be getting into HO even more and getting more serious with HO to where the, they'll bring you some detail-oriented HO products as well. Make sure you say hello to Ryan for us. Ryan Hi. is right here. <laughs> how are we doing, Hi, Ryan? Yeah. So how oh, you doing? There's Good Ken. Day. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Did he misses you. I miss, miss, so, miss him more. So we're all in close quarters, but... We got these guys. Ken Silvestri. <laughs> yeah, so we have Ken Silvestri and Eric here, and they are uh, they're hanging out at Train Fest as well. They've got some really cool products. The, the 484 Northern in the Brass Hybrid Series has come out. So what you look at? Yeah. I'm going to let Ken talk. He knows this better than I do, but it's a Brass Hybrid. I'm look. The hybrids are always a switching locomotive. And Take a look at it, that, and it is exquisite. Just beautiful. Tons of detail on that thing. The hybrids are wonderful. Absolutely beautiful. Now, then we have, and I think these are remarkable. These are SW7, NW2 switchers. Some will be here in December. They have 
and this is what's so it's like a miracle for me it has full electronics in it it has rolling thunder it's dual mode full sound it's got everything in it and it's that big the shell on them is die cast so they have good weight and they pull very nicely a lot of road names look at the website see kenny he can help you with those that's right yeah the broadway one thing I noticed about Broadway is they pull like nothing else. Like I can't find anything that comes even close in HO. I haven't done a lot of pull testing in, but I'm sure it's the same thing. Somebody's really smart about how they put those locomotives uh, to have that amount of traction. So, you know, we add weight to them, and then we balance them. And that's just like what the real railroads did. They made sure that the weight was distributed over all the drive wheels. We make sure that that's done, and that that's a big part of it. One thing you probably may or may not be able to hear the Rolling Thunder, which is a really cool accessory. It's really my favorite accessory that brings kids to the layout. And uh, I say it a lot on my reviews. It's, it's the coolest thing uh, to make those kids come to the layout, just like you're operating water towers. It's really cool. And it, it brings that trackside experience to it. That's it. It's, 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 this is the uh, the presidential series. It's a, a Pacific, and we're starting off with Two presidents, Reagan and John F. Kennedy. Um, and if they're successful, we'll do more of those. This is the blue comet next to it, right here. And yeah. this is the this is a fantasy scheme. It's the daylight Pacific. It's cool looking, looks very nice. And here we have the uh, GG ones, and they'll be out shortly. And there it's an all new tooling, Broadway quality, Broadway, Broadway. Uh, that's who I'm looking for. That quality, and durability, and durability. No, I'm um, uh, um, detail oriented. So, yeah. Good running, good sound. Yeah, and there's the diet. The, um, oh, boy, we're both having brain parts today. <laughs> panographs. The tops there. Panographs. Pan yeah, panographs. panographs. They uh, go up and down. They spring up and down in the same place. Oh, we need them. They're pretty cool. They pick up power too. No. no. Okay. No. It's all metal. It looks like metal. It's just really detailed, I guess. All right. And Eric wants to say hi to his son. He did, when I went to visit Broadway, Eric's son uh, missed the opportunity to have his dad on camera, so I wanted to give that opportunity now real quick. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Very Thanks. cool. Yep. So that's uh, anything else, Ken? Yeah. Oh, holiday cards. We have two. Oh, I didn't even know about this. Holiday we cards. Have holiday songs. The other one is a stock car that has reindeer in it. And like our stock cars, the more, the faster and the more it moves, the more agitated they become. So we have <laughs> Santa's reindeers in a box car. <laughs> Let's see. That's, That's pretty nifty. So it's another uh, great product, BLI. So thanks for your time, Ken. There's, there's a lot of Kens in this hobby. <laughs> yep. Ken Silvestri is the most animated salesman in the train industry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Atlas, uh, I'll walk down here. They're kind of tucked in between. And I wanted to give uh, give a couple minutes to Atlas here because they've got a Multimax they've uh, got decorated samples of. Yeah. So I was going to show that real quick. Sorry, pardon me, guys. <laughs> so we've got the BNSF and the Kansas City Southern showing here in the decorated scheme here. So get a lot of questions about uh, what sides are made of. There's plastic sides, but a lot of people have not seen the underbody detail. And they got airline uh, brake line hoses on each end and uh, kind of disregard that little clip of tape in between the trucks, but uh, they're just so free rolling that they take off on you. So that's a good thing if you want really long consists. And then their gotcha. announcement for the train show is the GE U28C and, and U28CG. So it's going to be in Conrail. It's going to be in L&N, PRR, or Pennsylvania Railroad, Santa Fe, Southern Pacific, and Penn Central. So they're anticipating uh, 2020 for delivery on these, but it's all new tooling. You got metal knuckle couplers, DC and sound versions, etched metal grills, all the different parts, the separately applied parts, but they also have the cab and low nose headlight housing variations Very nice. uh, to accurately match the prototype. So those are pre-production samples, not painted up or anything yet, but they just uh, 
they were kind of overshadowed by the auto racks. Uh, I noticed with the viewers because viewers and the people visiting the booth because there's a lot of excitement around the auto racks. They've got the 3230 covered hoppers and decorated paint schemes and BLMA uh, I think had a part in that when they went with uh, Atlas, but they've got some really nice underbody detail. You can see all those hoses sure. and uh, piping, plumbing going to each of the bay areas on these. So really cool stuff. I think it was like really a match made in heaven for BLMA to have Atlas pick up their lines. And that means they get signal systems and things like that that are now Atlas products, which is really cool. Yeah. And then one one thing that's great for kids, we talked about kids, is they've got this train kids passenger train set. And that's a more durable set with a remote control. And the battery's all tucked inside and it's uh, sealed inside. You screw it in so the kids can't get with the battery or anything. And I don't know if this is powered on yet for the morning, but uh, they've got a remote control that works and it's a lot more durable of a set so kids can play with it, but still on HO scale track. And it's uh, like a compressed version of the Acela. So it's really neat. You can get the set, plus you can get a powered locomotive and first class car and then separate business class cars as well. So wow. They're really trying to bring kids into the system. Uh, into the uh, model railroad hobby, I should say, and get them, you know, in the system and going and developing over years and years um, to where it sticks with them like it has with so many of us, including myself. Very cool. A lot, lot of stuff, a lot of product, a lot of new product. Um, it, it seems like a great show to be at. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, there's all sorts of vendors. <laughs> not just the manufacturers, but vendors galore. I could not actually get into a booth yesterday. That's how busy it was to do some personal shopping. <laughs> so uh, it was just packed. Uh, they, they think record sales. Uh, when I first talked to the people that are tracking uh, ticket sales and things like that, but they usually publish the numbers a couple of days after the show. But it, regardless, it's one of the top two or three attended shows in the country. Really? Wow. Um, Walters is tucked away over here. So I was going to show you those guys and then uh, maybe wrap up with uh, just a maybe a vendor or two to show you guys just yeah. kind of neat stuff's out there. But uh, for Walters, well, got the EMD GP9 Phase 2 High Hood that they're showing off here. This is uh, announced for... Train Fest just announced for Train Fest. Very They're cool. Expecting delivery in 2020, and you can see the schemes here. You've got painted pre-production models. That's Rock great. Island, New Haven, Illinois Central, Santa Fe, Baltimore, Maryland, and Precision. Very nice. So MSRP on these is uh, 199.98 each, and they come with ESU and Oak Sound. Or ESU sound, not Oak sound, but uh, it's got an ESU decoder in it. And then the DC versions are 139.98. So those are the new show announcement. And just showing you one thing that stuck with me uh, because I just thought it was so impressive that the Walters booth was over here. They've got the Steel Series. Hmm. So this right here is a blast furnace for a steel mill. Wow. And it's a kit. It's going to retail for $249.98. And it's got a lot of really cool features. And it's just really impressive once you get it together and elevated a railroad platform that you integrate your railroad into. Hmm. But this thing's massive. It takes up, it goes probably from my waistline to my chin in height. So we're talking a couple feet at least two to three feet in height and then they've got all sorts of stuff to go with that industry the hot metal bottle box or bottle cars and two packs yeah, slot yeah. cars bulkhead flat cars but they're calling it the steel series and it's coming in 2020 so people that model the steel industry can do that and they've also got rolling mills in the steel series 
again, these are large, large buildings. Yeah. First look, you would think they're O scale, but they're just so large in real life that even at 187, they're huge. But these are HO scale buildings. And this thing is as long as one of my legs. And you know, I'm a six foot one tall guy. Yeah. So, uh, that's uh, got to be pretty impressive if you put that on your layout for sure. Yeah. And they've got the steel uh, series electric furnace and the blower engine house with piping. So all stuff from the steel series, pretty cool. Alders is ignoring me right now, but that's okay. So, <laughs> no, they're a bit, they're busy talking. Um, but there's like we talked about the vendors and just the show in general. Uh, one really cool thing I noticed here was like traintracks.com has these RFID solutions for model routing, like large layouts, small layouts. But I'm really dumb when it comes to this stuff. So I'm going to have, he's not going to be able to hear you, but I'll have Carlton Brown, who heads this up, talk about this a little with Tom. Just give a like a couple minutes or a minute spiel, like a real quick basic how this works, if you don't mind. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull up a manifest. And the way that we pull up a manifest on here in the trainfact.com, we're actually using RFID and we're integrating it with JMRI. And so with the integration that we've done with JMRI, we're able to pull up a manifest on our cell phones. And you'll just have to kind of do a click at the screen on the QR code and it'll pull up your manifest here. And that tells us we're actually to pick up and uh, drop off the cars. So right now it has us picking up two cars over here. And as we pick those two cars up, we're just gonna move this out and it is going to go over a reader. We got bags that are underneath the car and we'll show you that in one hot second, but we're going to go ahead and move the Loki cards out of the Dawson Creek location. And as you'll see, this little light will show up. Uh, and that's gonna, and that really says that it has caught that. And the information from that, as it goes over that reader, you see the cars pop up here. And the cars will pop up saying the time that it came out of that location, the locations that it's coming from, and it'll show the destination that it's going to also. So just like the real railroad, they track all their cars where they're at all the, at all times. This is able to do that, showing pictures and uh, using these wow. tags that you install on the trucks that uh, interface with their system to do that on your model railroad and have the same tracking. So it's just a little tiny tag. It doesn't affect truck operation or anything. Hmm. That's wild. How that looks. You got a Wi-Fi reader in there that is connected to this uh, reader that you have here. And as that tag goes over that reader, it's gonna capture it here. And again, it'll pop up automatically over here with all the information of the car. As it goes over that reader, the data from this tag, which is the car information, is gonna to go to a Wi-Fi module. And that Wi-Fi module is going to go through a Raspberry Pi that we have set up for this pre-configured. And uh, it'll pop up all of this information that you see here. Well, thanks, Carlton. Uh, every time I talk to these guys, it feels like I'm talking to Neil deGrasse Tyson or something. They're on some next level stuff. But what yep. I gather from this the most is that, you know, it's you're able to mimic real world operations. It's great for layouts of any size, really. But those club layouts <laughs> and those guys that are really into operations will help them bring it to the next level. Exactly. Yep. So thanks, Carlton. All right, thank you. But there's vendors like Cadet all over Train Fest. There's DVD sales, uh, hat shirt sales. It's a really good time and you get to spend a lot of that time, uh, you know, conversing with your fellow model railroaders. There's very much a sense of esprit de corps and, and the community here. So yeah, it's a really nice thing. And I hope I can continue to at least visit because uh, it's great. Um, and it's, it's, it's a great time. Do you have any other can, questions, can, Ken? Or? Can you just peek to the right to the uh, Marklin LGB, LGB booth? <clears throat> oh, yeah, LGB. And uh, I, I think they should have the, uh, the Golden Spike Anniversary engine, if I'm not mistaken. Um, is that a, uh, a uh, 40, is that a? Yeah, a $10,000 engine. 
but uh, oh. maybe they don't. Uh, yeah, they do oh, on the right is. right hand side. And Gail is over there. He's the manager of uh, LGB oh, now. Just sat here. Yeah, so, but uh, it's brass. On, on a, yeah, so golden spike set here. It's like it comes in a nice wooden box. Yeah, it's an expensive engine, but it's it's definitely beautiful. And uh, yeah. tell, make sure you tell Gail we say hello. Okay. Gail, Train World says hi. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> a, a so yeah, that's a ten thousand dollar set, huh? Yeah, Not, yeah, yeah. It that's pretty it sweet. Co comes with two engines, uh, brass, um, just really beautiful. But uh, yeah. and then they got the Coca Cola set. Looks nice. Yep. Yeah, you'll have to fill in for me here, but I'm I need to spin up on LGB a little more. But yeah, it's a real nice Coca Cola set. Yep. And very HO, cool. We got some HO stuff, including a Challenger locomotive over here. So. Oh, huh. very nice. Yep. A lot of good stuff, guys. And uh, James, thank you so much for taking your time out today to show us around train fest and uh, give us a walkthrough and a personal one-on-one uh, -on -one with you. We really appreciate it, James. No problem. Anytime, Kim. And, uh, thanks for all you guys do to promote the hobby as well. Huh? Appreciate your uh, chatting with you here as we walk around train fest and kind of enjoy the show. Now, thank you, James. The pleasure is all ours. And uh, thanks everyone for watching. And uh, you could get all these products at trainworld.com. Thank you very much, James, for uh, doing this with us. Really appreciate it, man. All right. No problem. All right. Take care, everyone.